venerable Chateau Marmont Hotel in Los Angeles, home to Hollywood royalty and Hollywood wannabes. And every once in a while, somebody comes along here who makes people sit up and take notice. Today's guest began humbly near Ottawa, won two Genie Awards, and has scored a major role in the hit TV series, Arliss. Our guest on The Actors, Sandra O. Oh. Why, why do you do what you do? What was it that made you want to do this? When did you know you wanted to do it? Uh, early. Early. When I really think about it, um, there's a couple of things that happen. One, you know, when you try and think about what were the actual moments. Sure. One, I saw a production of Annie when I was around eight. Mm -hmm. And it thrilled me so much because uh, there were girls up there, and yeah. I thought that I want to do that. Two, I, okay, I'm, co I'm copying to this now. There was this television show. I remember I was in the fourth grade. Um, it was called Fame, and it was about kids who went to PA like, at LaGuardia in New York, and mm -hmm. you were like dancing and singing, and they were able to act and dance all the time, and it looked like they were having so much fun, and I wanted to go to PA. I wanted to go and to school in New York because it looked like so much fun. And then um, the third thing is um, I watched a lot of the Carol Burnett show, um, and I realized, it's taken me a long time to realize, go back, is that um, that actually influenced me a lot, too. The Carol Burnett show? Yeah, she's amazing. She's amazing. She would be able to take these huge characters and be so funny and so real and uh, make people um, laugh. But you saw in it the complexity that maybe somebody else might have missed. Uh, now. Um, but those are like kind of like those kind of concrete moments. Mm -hmm. Everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> those kids were fast as lightning. <laughs> Um, what are you, what are you doing here? Oh, you forgot this in my car. Oh, thanks. Anything wrong? Oh, no, no, nothing. Nothing's wrong. Oh, and you forgot these. Those are for luck. You're not supposed to say that. Break your legs. You know, you're obnoxiously sweet. Or maybe I'm sweetly obnoxious. Mark, get out of here. Leave. Now. He's just a friend. Have you no sense? Hmm? Would anyone ever want to take you as a wife? In my own house? Hmm? Dad, he's just a friend. We weren't... You know I have a guest. Dad, please. Guang, let us check on the slow piece. We go inside now. Should we bring in the groceries? We go inside now. There's a Canadian friend of mine once who wrote this poem, song poem, Leonard Cohen. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm sentimental. Nice, I love that. I'll have a friend, Leonard Cohen. Okay, go on. I'm sentimental, if you know what I mean. I love the country. I just can't stand the scene. Is there any of that? There is such a scene here, and uh, either you fit into it or not. Either you fit into this place or you don't. Uh huh. And you got to find your way from that point. Because there are a lot of doors to be knocked on. There's a lot of doors to be slammed in your face. Yeah. And what you do with that, either open or close, is, up, is really mm. 
up to you. You can like the place. You can get what you want out of it. Um, <clears throat> you worked with uh, Hank Azaria in something, didn't you? Here. Yeah. If not for you. Yeah. What was that project? Um, that was my first job here. It was a very short, I can't believe this. It was a really short lived uh, sitcom for right. CBS. So, like two or three episodes you did, or more than that? Yeah, I did two episodes and they canceled it before my episode had ever aired. Yeah. It was really, it was really weird. It was my first kind of ushering into like going on to a lot and being a sitcom with people that you knew, the Hank Azaria and Elizabeth McGovern. And I, I, I hated the experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm you kept going. Uh, but then I kept going. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad that it was, it didn't. What did you it, hate about that experience? It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I, it wasn't like, I didn't feel I could act. You know, I'm an actor. I want to act. And they put you in a position where they Where, you know, where you. you just don't really act. You know, you, um, you wait around for a long time and then your challenge is to make a, you know, a, a straight line funny. Mm -hmm. Or, or it's just the whole around it. I, I just felt, you know, I'm not, I'm not acting, and it would, it would just really kill me. <laughs> there is a certain kind of hell in uh, this uh, sitcom business. It seems to be in America, isn't there? Where there are an awful lot of people standing around delivering lines that are supposed to be funny. Yes. And the audience up there on the bleachers laughs. Yes. When they're told to. When they're told to. But it's kind of sad in a way, you know. You know what's sad? The sad is going away from sitcom to reality TV. That's what I find sad. Yeah. Um, because we're expecting, uh, you know, real people to be funny and dramatic on their own. Um, sitcoms are for big companies to put ads in. I, you know, I don't know. Hmm. Some of them work. A lot of them don't. A lot of people aren't patient enough to actually nurture it. Is it, is it just because it's um, such a commercial business? Uh... I think so. Comedy's really hard to do. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to do. It's really hard to find a voice. I mean, uh, there is a pattern. Everybody knows it. You don't even have to know what the... It goes like this. ba 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 Ha, 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 ha. Right. You're trained. And everyone is trained to know that kind of uh, three jokes per page. And but literally, it's it's the raising of the voice, the lowering of the voice, the raising of the voice, the deadpan punchline. You know, everybody knows that. That's not. <sighs> Comedy is a really rich art form that people don't respect. I am slowly learning how to respect. Um, but people don't respect it. People don't realize that you need time. You need really bright people. Mm -hmm. uh, and you need a lot of patience for it to find its way. There are really bright people. Where are they going to try to make good comedy in America? Are, are they doing it at HBO? Is that, is that the place where... You know, HBO has tremendous programming now. And it's filling, obviously, a gigantic gap. People love... Uh, people uh, uh, buy HBO for the programming. I mean, I put my TV on to any station to for company. Mm -hmm. You don't watch it. You know, if you, have, if you have cable, you watch it for those shows specifically. Um, and what happens is, uh, you, is that they're giving much more leeway. On my show, we hardly ever have anybody from HBO there. Mm 